Welcome to Pathways ADS Power Integrity Best Practices. How do you know if your electronics is getting optimum, quiet power delivery to your high-speed digital electronics? In just a few minutes, this video will demonstrate a three-step DC-AC time domain simulation workflow that can quickly identify and help mitigate worst-case noise sources. Why is it important to simulate? Because power delivery is not intuitive. Take this Xilinx ZCU-104 eval kit. Look at the high current power delivery on the main VCC int power rail from the voltage regulator module to the FPGA load, also called the sink. When I plot dynamic voltage versus time while switching 400,000 registers at 200 megahertz, I get 24 millivolts peak to peak voltage ripple with 13 and a half amps DC current. I thought that a faster switching load with more current would be worst case. But Pathwave ADS simulation with accurate component and PCB EM models proved me wrong. Demonstrated with simulation and verified with measurement, it was discovered that the worst case noise is at 30 megahertz with only 3.5 amps. This plot shows the noise doubling to 47 millivolts peak to peak even though the frequency is lower and the DC current is less. What was the secret to finding the worst case noise at 30 megahertz? It starts with understanding a step response versus a forced response. Here is an oscilloscope measurement of a power rail with the voltage shown in yellow and the load current in blue versus time. Data sheets often specify step load changes in current to determine pass-fail ripple requirements. However, dynamic digital loads switching at the same frequency as a resonance in the power rail can create a forced response that is much larger than the step response. This excessive ringing of the forced response can lead to voltages that exceed device limits and be a source of late in the design EMI EMC failures. Now I will demonstrate the power integrity simulation workflow that found this worst case forced response noise ripple on the power rail. The workflow includes DC IR drop, AC EM impedance models, and full PI ecosystem time domain simulations. Opening the ZCU-104 example workspace shows the ADS main window and a README schematic with the power integrity workflow. This workflow starts with importing the ODB++ PCB CAD data, including the stackup, and then opening ADS PI Pro to run a DC IR drop analysis. Setup is as simple as right-clicking on the VRM and adding the component to the DC IR drop analysis. Search tools also make it easy to find components, like the FPGA Sync U1, and add it to the analysis. The setup is net-based, and when components are connected to multiple nets, then one is prompted to select the net of interest. Adding components between nets, such as the inductor between the VRM and the Sync, is as simple as selecting both nets in the analysis and then right-clicking on the selected nets to select components exclusively connected to them. Then add the selected inductor component to the DC analysis. Right-click the VRM, sync, and inductor component in the analysis to set up the properties. The VRM setup is used to add sense lines. The simulation is now ready to run. The results report provides a quick pass-fail power tree view, as well as more detailed reports on the sinks, VRMs, and vias. 3D current density plots can be used to improve routing by reducing areas of excessive IR drop that often lead to thermal reliability problems. This fast DCIR drop simulation quickly verifies a valid setup with the VRM connected to the sink and completes step one. Step two is to create an AC impedance EM model of the PCB. Simply right-click on the DC analysis and copy to an AC analysis. To add the capacitors, highlight the power rail VCC int net and the ground net in the AC analysis and select Add Components Exclusively Connected to these nets. Notice that the components that were added already have a LibCell model. If the component has a schematic and a symbol, then PI Pro will automatically create an S-parameter model from the schematic to use in PI Pro. 
The vendor capacitor model typically consists of the capacitor characteristics and some mounting inductance. The PCB EM model already includes the mounting inductance for the PCB footprint, and it would not be good to add a capacitor model that also includes mounting inductance from some unknown fixture. ADS makes it easy to create a capacitor measured model with and without the mounting inductance. Here is a typical plot of a ceramic capacitor showing the vendor data. The vendor data is compared to measured data and then compared to measured data with the mounting inductance de-embedded. The measured capacitor data with the mounting inductance de-embedded is the right model to use with the PI Pro PCB EM model. The ADS component model library tool then automates the mapping of the user verified library of component models to the imported PCB component library cells. Back to the PI Pro AC simulation and the component models. More than one capacitor model can be assigned to a component group for optimizing the decoupling capacitor values. The VRM properties are updated to have a simple RL AC model, and the sync properties are updated to include an S parameter model of the package die power distribution network. Running the AC simulation takes less than 50 minutes, and the results can be compared to a desired target impedance. The FEM-based EM simulation solves for all of the capacitor ports, making it possible to change values and turn capacitors on and off without re-simulating. Turning the VRM, the package die model, and all of the capacitors off shows the downward capacitive slope of the bare printed circuit board capacitance from power to ground. Shorting the VRM shows the path resistance and inductance between the VRM and sink. Capacitors can be optimized by turning them on and off to see the impact on the impedance, by checking the loop inductance to the sink, and by visualizing the current densities versus frequency. However, on complex designs, it is best to run the DCAP optimizer to see which capacitors can be removed while still meeting the desired target impedance. Optimizing for target impedance completes step two. The final step three is to use the AC analysis results in a transient time domain simulation to find the worst case noise ripple on the power rail. The PI Pro impedance plot for the VCC int power rail shows an impedance peak at 30 MHz. Exciting this impedance peak with a forced time domain excitation will create a worst case noise ripple. To run a time domain transient simulation, simply select Generate Subcircuit from the PI Pro AC Analysis Results. This exports the PI Pro PCB PDN impedance model with all of the capacitors to a schematic and symbol in ADS. A PI ecosystem schematic simulation is set up with the VRM model, the PI Pro PCB PDN model, and the package die model connected to a dynamic load. The load is set to a time domain forcing function that pulses the FPGA load current on and off at a 30 MHz rate. Simulation makes it easy to change the dynamic load frequency to 200 MHz. Comparing the simulated results confirms that a switching load at 30 MHz has more voltage noise ripple and matches the measured results shown at the beginning of this video. This was a short demo of running a three-step power integrity analysis for worst case noise using Pathwave ADS with PI Pro. More extensive analysis of design margins can be done in the first DC analysis step by exploring the complexity of VRM and sync asymmetric tolerances along with improved accuracy of DC electrothermal. The second AC analysis step can benefit from flat matched impedance design to improve capacitor placement and find the right design space for capacitor optimization. Expanding the EM model to include a VRM switching model enables conducted EMI simulations. The third PI ecosystem step can be expanded to include state space average VRM models with small signal and large signal behavior that are well suited for a fast harmonic balance. If you want to try this three-step DC-AC transient PI workflow using Pathwave ADS with PI Pro, please follow the links in the description below for requesting an ADS demo license and downloading the ZCU-104 workspace example.